Well, hi everybody. It's Thursday. Yeah, we didn't do a show on Monday. You didn't miss anything. Uh, the uh, air conditioning in my house broke. Yeah, I had to get that fixed. That was Monday right there. That Get it fixed, you know. <laughs> we got it fixed and rolling by mo late Monday night. We had it repaired. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of, uh, you know, ching, ching, ching. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is the project I was working on next was uh, this old Craftsman store. I bought it a long time ago, but the thing was, all this is broken and gone, so I was thinking it'd be an interesting 3D project to take on. But there was a problem immediately after I got it home, I got the tape measure on it, and it's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it uh, requires at least about 355 millimeter by 355 millimeter build plate if you're going to print it in one go. Uh, sometimes people, when they take this sort of thing on, they will try to, you know, piece it together, and I'm, I'm just not big on that. I'd rather do the whole thing in one shot, but obviously you need a big, you know, 3D printer. So that was a problem. Now we have uh, Cobra 2 Max here. Cobra 2 Max it has a build plate size of 420 by 420. That's, that's huge. So that's cool. So that was another, you know, good thing. Then I got looking at this again and I thought, well, if we print this, uh, we're going to have to figure out how to print it. I don't want to use supports. Can we do that? I think I can. <laughs> Yeah, so I like to print this without supports, and in order to do that, I took a quick, you know, I was looking at this and thinking, we can always think outside the box. That's that's the cool thing about 3D printing, is you can come up with your own design. So rather than duplicate this tray and have to support all this stuff here in order to print it like it is, I'm thinking what we could do is just go across here with a straight 3D printed plate and then just put a rise of, of edges around the plate like this on top to create the same kind of situation where they, they had this sort of place where you could, uh, I guess, throw your sockets and tools down in here or something or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, the next, very next thing I'm going to do is I also checked, by the way, I checked plasticity to make sure the graphics on there would be big enough to allow me to draw this up. And it, it is big enough, so it's like, cool. So I've started drawing the plate. I just drew the 355 by 355 on plasticity. We haven't located these holes yet. That's the other thing. I've got to measure this out and make sure that my, my holes line up. And that's always uh, kind of tricky when it comes to CAD drawing is uh, getting everything you know lined up with the holes. So the other thing too is, of course, how big are these holes? We don't know yet because we've got great big washers and you know these weird looking bolts that go down into the... Uh, they go down into whoops, go down into the wheels here somehow, and it looks like it's. Uh, I'm not really sure how it was attached. Uh, you can't really tell. So I'm gonna get a wrench, and we'll see if we can get these out and remove the plate, so that we hopefully we can have the plate maybe with me right at the computer while I'm, you know, entering the drawing that in the dimensions. Uh, ideally, if I do a flat plate across here and just do the risers around here. The 3D printer can handle that and there's no support needed or anything and it'll just, it'll happen and it'll go up really, hopefully, really fast. Uh, I'll go get some, uh, maybe some uh, penetrating oil and see what we can do. Get these bolts out of here. Oof. Wow, that came off real easy. Uh, I put the uh, Allen key in here to the top of the bolt here and I gave it a little smack with the hammer and it immediately broke loose and came out of the wheels from the uh, Craftsman. This sleeves over top, so the thread is actually on the inside of this bolt. I did not know how this was assembled. I guess I could replace these washers too. Uh, they're pretty nasty looking. Maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, refurbish on that sort of thing. But uh, really wasn't that bad. I was surprised. I thought for sure we'd really be doing some fighting to get this out of here, but apparently not. There it goes. Yeah, look at this. As old as this thing is, I'm kind of surprised. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, it's not as not as bad as I thought it would be to get these wheels and everything out of here. So, okay, we got the wheels all off, all the hardware, and so now we can just lift the tray out. Yeah, there. <laughs> not. The, yeah, you think we need a new one? Yeah, it's not very thick plastic either, by the way, uh, which is typical of uh, manufacturing these days. This was probably extruded, probably cost them nothing. Just think in terms of 3D printing, this part here will probably take, you know, I'm going to say between five and ten dollars worth of filament to uh, remanufacture whatever. So, you know, we're, 
We're not, uh, you know, we're not going to compete with production. That's for sure. Not with an extrude, plastic extruded that was probably knocked out with a machine. They probably made these things what in minutes, in seconds. They probably knocked these things off. But uh, I'm going to try to duplicate this little fencing, and we'll come straight across, and we'll we'll put a fence across around here or something, and a fence across the back. In fact, I might run the fence across the whole back or something. That'll sort of help to give it, you know, some strength. Maybe even a tall fence across the back that'll stiffen all of this. Uh, plastic up when we make the new one. Well, I think we're going to have to get a piece of paper and a pencil here and just get all this measured up for, I really, the, probably the only thing we've got going on here that's tough is getting these holes to line up the way they were. Now, the very first measurement I took was center to center from here to here, and it came up exactly 275 millimeters. And that's kind of cool because you figure when somebody was drawing this up, these are the kind of numbers they would have dealt with. Just like this right here is exactly five millimeters across. Uh, the whole size is 14 millimeter. Uh, just everything is coming up in very, very rounded, you know, we'll sort of say rounded uh, numbers or even numbers. And so that kind of indicates we're on the right track. So we've got to get a couple more measurements here. And I think I'll write everything on a piece of paper, draw it out, and that way we know exactly you know, what we need. I was going to take this into the computer with me, but I don't think I will. This is pretty nasty. I don't want it in the office with me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how well you can see that because the paper sheet here with all the lighting is kind of white here, but I'll just sort of hold this up a little bit. Maybe you can make that out. But uh, what I've done is make all my notes on here from the dimensions of here so that when we open up Plasticity, we can lay all this out. Now, here's the bad news. Uh, I did a quick slice on this thing and took a look at it with the slicer. It's going to be about nine hours. So in other words, this is going to have to be part one and part two will be Monday or something when we finish it or whatever because this is not going to be done. Today's Thursday. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll try to get a short one out tomorrow on Friday when we finish this. But there was a couple of things I ran into that I'm kind of happy about. And one of them was these are sloppy as can be with the holes. So that means when I got these holes located, if I'm off a little, you know, one or two millimeters or something, I'm going to be okay because the uh, Sears or whoever made this thing was, you know, made it real sloppy. So that's good. I would like to see if I can find some washers or just clean these up and I don't know, put maybe just reuse the washers. They're pretty nasty. I did a basic uh, cross here and just a box kind of thing, nothing too fancy. There's no point because I really don't believe in using these trays normally. Anyways, it's just more of a you know, finish it up and have the, the feature there in case you want to, I don't know, put, throw your hammer down in there or something. Uh, the other thing too is these radius. To measure the radius, uh, I came up with 80. I think it's, well, that's what it came up with, so we'll go with that. Now, how I did that, and I'll just show you, is I took a 90 degree, a little speed square here, and brought it up to the very edge of this curve where it starts to turn, and then measured across from here to here, and oddly enough, it came up at exactly 80 millimeters, which means probably got it right, you know. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll run with that and see how it looks when we get her done. Uh, one other mistake that was in here was I put a radius back. There's a little radius here. I put a little radius back here, and I and now I realized I shouldn't even do that. There's no point in having it. This could be squared off. It it doesn't make any changes or differences to uh, the product or the modeling, whatever. And as far as uh, if you're going to do this on, uh, like resell these things on Etsy or something, uh, tell you the truth, with the nine hours, you'd have to charge more than the chair is worth. Yeah, to, to make your money, to be seriously make your money out of it. So this is not, this is a me project for me kind of thing. And at the same time, you know, I'll show you guys, uh, if you have a 3D printer, these are the kind of repairs you can deal with. And it's, it's fun. It's like a hobby thing, but it's fun. Okay, we're in plasticity, and here's what I drew. Now, don't panic over the uh, deal with the uh, grid being way over to the uh, right side right now. It was completely a full grid underneath us when we were drawing it up. Now that we've finished and we've uh, gotten ready to, we sent this file over, all of this uh, came off the grid like this on plasticity. I don't know, let's see, I'll move it over here a little bit. I don't know why it does this sort of thing. This sort of thing that's sort of a bug or whatever it sort of drives me a little crazy, but. Uh, you can see that I've uh, put the radius cuts back in here, drew, did the holes, and drew up. And I just drew up something very basic square thing on top here, just a plate. And again, just to you know, hold some basic tools where you could throw the you know stuff down. So that's where we're at. We'll have to talk about plasticity a little bit more in the future, of course. But right now, just 
threw this together and we we have a little problem here it's going to take over nine hours to print this so yeah we'll figure that out and there we are we're printing the uh what we drew up in plasticity and we've got a ways to go of course because it's a big model unfortunately the nine hours i didn't see that coming because this is usually a pretty fast machine but it's got a lot of work ahead of it. I set it at 20% infill, so I think that'll be good, and, you know, strong enough for what we're doing anyways. So let's go back to the workbench and uh, we'll close this up. Yeah, so we're, we're back over the bench here for the time being, and I guess we can take our dimensional thing here and just, yeah, we're done with that. Put my good pencil back wherever I found it. You know how that goes, you always look for pencils. The uh, project, uh, should be ready about midnight tonight so we're going to call this part one when we come back at part two we'll have it finished i hope and we'll uh, reinstall it back in the craftsman chair uh this is just a good idea i think to show that you can buy an old craftsman tool like a yard sale or something and with a 3d printer you could remanufacture the piece or whatever it is you want uh no i'm not going to be selling these or something but you know it's just something you, you could do i i guess but uh, i don't know how many of these things are out there in the world and it would be pretty hard to make money on such a large piece like that that takes so long to print yeah and ideally if i was going to do it i would do it this way and re replicate the part and then i'd have all this uh these high edges like this would all have to be printed with supports which would have to be torn off and thrown away afterwards and again, to me, that's kind of wasteful and there's no real need. I prefer to work without supports all the time. Now, all that aside, got a question, uh, maybe leave a comment below. If you guys want, I would be willing to take it on. I don't know how good we can do it, uh, to try to do a tutorial programming uh, week to week on using plasticity and the tools and how to work with it, going from the very basics so you can sort of learn how to draw things out on plasticity yourself to use in order to manufacture parts like what I'm doing today because that's really uh, if you can draw your own stuff man it's it just blows you your, your world wide open with all kinds of possibilities and it's really it's so cool it's and I, at times it's, it's like a hobby but other times it, you know it can be a, a business situation too in the meantime, I guess we will get out of here and say, hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. And we'll be back with more. We'll be back with part two. <laughs> Over and out.